Welcome to Valley Heat. I'm Doug Duguay. This is a podcast about the neighborhood, my neighborhood, the Burbank Rancho Equestrian District, right here in Los Angeles County. You know, I was driving up the street the other day, and I drive past my neighbor Gary Janthony's house. He's one house up. And you know those drive through car washes, those structures you see at a Chevron, you pay like 11 or 12 bucks, you drive through it, and it washes your car in about five minutes? My neighbor Gary Janthony bought one of these. He put it in his driveway. Every time he goes home, he just turns the car wash on. His car's washed. I said, how much do you pay for that? He said, about $26,000. I asked him how this could possibly be cost effective for him. He said, oh, this isn't just for me. This is for the whole neighborhood. I'm opening a business. Janthony's Car Wash on Riverside and Sparks. It's a car wash in a guy's driveway. Well, his driveway runs along the side of his house. So normally you drive on his driveway, you go into his garage, but now he's got the car wash there. So you drive up inside. It's about a five minute wash. And once you're on the other side, you're in his backyard. And you got to make sort of a three or four point turn to turn yourself around. And one of his kids is back there just looking at you like, I guess it's another guy getting his car washed. One drawback is that Gary said his older son came back from college the other day and got kind of drunk late at night, wanted to start it up and run through it. And the thing sprayed hot wax all over him. He got third degree burns. They had to rush him to the emergency room at like four in the morning. That's his son, Tony. And that guy was a real real trouble when he lived here in this neighborhood but he's really cleaned his act up i mean he'll still get drunk and run through an automatic car wash at four in the morning but hopefully he learned something another problem gary's got going on over there is that drive through car wash is pretty big it barely fits on his driveway and it's right up against the fence of his neighbor's property someone already accidentally gunned it trying to get around that structure to get out after the car wash and they drove into the neighbor's kitchen so gary right now is trying to build a second driveway to make this car wash thing work the city isn't real happy with his water usage since it's still zoned as a residence. Plus, it's very loud. It's kind of like a fireworks factory over there. I can hear it beeping all the way over here. I can't imagine what it's like for his neighbor, who's also rebuilding his kitchen because someone drove through it, which is why I should tell you now that this podcast is also brought to you by Takedown Gary. Takedowngary.org is a website for anyone who lives in this neighborhood who is suffering through this guy's car wash that he's installed in the driveway. And I'm trying to be impartial about it because Gary paid for time, but I, I live right across the street from it. It's like hearing fire hose training all day long. Anyway, check out takedowngary.org and see what you think. All right, let's start this episode of Valley Heat. These are the Chronicles of the Rancho of the Western District, District of Burbank, California. California. This is the stuff that's going on in the neighborhood, and I'm letting you know what's going on in the neighborhood on the podcast. So I install the small size drive through car wash across the street. All right, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is obviously Pete, our pool guy, and what's been going on with him. A quick recap on what's been going on around here is that Pete, our pool guy, has been using our garbage can as a drug drop, or at least we thought he was using our garbage can as a drug drop. And there's more developments in that story. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Before I get to that, I I did want to mention that uh, something we talked about a few episodes ago is that my wife's yoga teacher, Donovan, has been, he sent her a mermaid emoji over a Venmo transaction. You know, a mermaid seems like a, a somewhat intimate emoji to send to somebody. It's 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 somewhat naked, and it seemed like sort of an intimate message. It was sort of informed by something that came prior to that. Some cool downs I walked in on when you know he turns the lights down after a yoga session, and he's got candles burning, and he's playing Kate Bush. You know, it's really a weird situation to walk into. You know, you come home and your spouse is on the floor with a yoga guy, and they're staring at the ceiling, listening to you know some magical Kate Bush ballads. And this is one of those guys that rides a bike around with a radio that's playing really loud. He's got like a some kind of Bluetooth boombox on this 10 speed. And it's really kind of a specific kind of guy who rides around on a bike with a really loud radio playing so that everyone can hear it. And he rides this really expensive 10 speed and he does the thing where he has to wear all the things that you would wear if you were a professional bike racer who has a large team of experts who help him manage wind resistance. I mean, I don't know how much these outfits cost, but man, that is some tight stuff he's wearing, you know? And you can see everything inside. It's like you can see his organs. I mean, it looks like a guy just spray painted himself and put on a helmet and got on a bike, you know? And he shows up here and I open up the door and it's like his full essence is standing in the doorway. 
It's almost like someone walking up to you and just sticking your hand down their pants. And he comes in and does yoga with Faye in this $400 spandex superhero outfit. And they cool down like they're on some kind of couple's retreat. This is what they were listening to once when I walked in. They're listening to this Sarah McLaughlin song. You know, this 90s lovesick ballad. And the whole place smells like vanilla. I mean, you would not believe how many vanilla candles are burning. Lights are down. There's incense. I go, oh, hey, is that vanilla? And he goes, it's a cherry vanilla. I said, oh, well, thanks for clarifying. Should I just pack up and move out? And Faye got mad, and they ended the session early. Anyway, I talked to her about this, and that, you know, she knows how I feel about it. She's upset that I've even brought it up. She says that I'm imagining things, and you know, I, I, I trust her. Obviously, I. I don't really trust him. Last week I called and confronted him about it. He was dismissive and he said he was just going to talk to Faye about it and get back to me. Anyway, he called me today and let me know personally that he was still going to be coming over because he had talked to Faye. And it was a, actually a pretty revealing conversation. And I recorded the whole thing. I'll play it for you right after this promo. You know, I, I know I've talked about it before, uh, but this podcast is sponsored, of course, in part by Tall Handlebar Motorcycles. I don't know if you've ever seen those motorcycles they got the really tall handlebars they're so high guy looks like he's saying touchdown all the way down the road if you've ever driven one of these motorcycles it, the experience is amazing because your arms are straight up you look like you're in this elated state of celebration all the way down the road it's a pretty cool look and it's a pretty cool feeling if you go into rick merrill's tall and long shop he'll show you what's going on with your handlebars you know he'll measure your arms and figure out how tall they can go you want to get those arms way up straight you know one of the tests is you don't want your arms to be bent you want them to be straight up with your hands hanging down over the grip. So you look kind of like a biker warlock with his arms up, casting a spell on everything in front of him on the road. He'll also do the thing, I don't know if you've ever seen this, where they put these footrests on it, your feet are straight out, look like you're driving a lazy boy chair. Rick Merrill's tall and long shop, he's on Magnolia, check him out. And that's Randy Poole and the Cephalopodja people. They do all the music for the podcast. They do all the jingles and really went for it there with the Rick Merrill thing. And they're right. Rick will make your handlebars really tall. And he'll also, I didn't mention, make your front wheel go out way in front of the motorcycle. Anyway, getting back to the Donovan situation, Donovan gave me a call and let me know that he was still going to be coming around to teach yoga to Faye. And his wife ended up getting on the phone. Uh, anyway, I recorded it and here's what happened. Check it out. Hi, this is Doug. Douglas. Douglas. Donovan. Hi, Donovan. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. The reason I'm calling is because I had a conversation with Faye, like I told you I was going to be having. Okay. And it is her decision that we continue moving forward with her classes. So I will be coming over to your house. Okay. So you're just calling me to let me know that you're... Honey, I mean, is this the guy you were talking about? Is this the emoji guy? No, honey. It's Who, fine. Who's this? I've got this. You don't this have to be on the phone. Wife. Oh, I didn't know he's married. Kelly, it's okay. You can hang up. It's too late. I'm on the phone call, and I'm going to talk to this guy. What is this, a conference call? She's on the downstairs phone, Doug. We try not to use cell phones in this house. Is that okay with you? Uh, why am I explaining Yeah, well, my... you're happy to use the cell phone to mermaid my wife, I guess. Do what to your wife? Kelly. He sent a mermaid to her. How, how in the hell do you mermaid someone? That's ridiculous. Well, you slip him a mermaid in a Venmo transaction is how. I come home, and he'll be listening to, you know, Kate Bush or Christopher Cross while he's cooling down with my wife, and they got the lights down, and the candles are burning. I walk in, it's like a Michael Bolton video. Okay, it sounds like you have issues with your wife. This well, that not... might be true. I'll take that remark, but the point is, like, I don't know why I gotta walk in, and it's like a sting video. Get a grip. Isn't she paying for these sessions? 
She is paying for. Uh, well, honestly, we're yes, both paying for him. Look, he's not being intimate with your wife. My husband tells me everything, but you know what? If she wants to be intimate with him, I'm fine with it. What do you mean you're fine with it? We're in an open relationship, and when he wants to be intimate with someone else, he always consults me beforehand. That's how I know nothing is going on. Wait a minute! You're telling me that you guys are in an open relationship, and you'd be perfectly fine with that? Yes. Yeah. So I, I think that this is really what's going on here, is that he is hitting on her, and you just don't know it. Wait, my husband tells me everything. Thanks, Kelly. Nothing is going on. My husband does not want your wife. Like, I've seen your wife. She is not my husband's type. I'm my sorry. wife isn't good enough for your husband? She's just not. She's That's not his vibe. Well, look, he's not her vibe. Well, clearly he is her vibe, because you're feeling some kind of way. My wife is attractive, okay? Donovan is, like, attractive in a, you know, some kind of 90s way, you know, like a cashier at Whole Foods would be, you okay, know? Okay, first of all, you're not going to be talking about Donovan like You know what, he reminds me of, like, a whitewater like rafting Donovan. guide? Or, like, a guy in a documentary you know about what? people you who make furniture out of found items? you are putting into this, you need to put into your wife, because obviously she is not satisfied. <laughs> Donovan told me that she can't even get in all the positions. He comes home and talks about how good she does yoga. She's great at yoga. We never said that. I would think there'd we be some kind of confidentiality. Your wife is whack at yoga, okay? She's just there. She, she is not whack at yoga. I never said she was bad at yoga. She's perfectly okay at yoga. Donovan, I don't talk, talk about, about my clients. I don't badmouth them. I would never. They think you're cute and you're so sweet and they look into your brown eyes. But see, this is what I'm saying. This is what you I'm what? saying. I'm just going to let you guys talk. Clearly, no one is listening to me. Donovan. No, I'm getting off the phone. Bye. Well, I guess it's just you and me now. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get off the phone right now. You obviously have a lot to think about, you and your wife, whatever you need to do to fix your own union, but we're, me and mine, we're fine over here. Thank you for your time. Bye. All right, so you heard what happened there. You talk about burying the lead. You're in an open relationship? Oh, okay, maybe you start with that. I mean, beware of any yoga teacher in an open relationship, really. And he doesn't even think she's good at yoga, which isn't true. She's great at yoga. I mean, can you be great or not good at yoga? Is there even a rating system? I don't know. I feel like you can just be a yoga teacher. You know, it's like being a, I don't know, an optometrist or something. No offense to optometrists. I mean, maybe I'm just talking about my optometrist. My optometrist looks like it was either this or just selling sunglasses out of a van. Oh, you hear that going off across the street? That's Anthony's car wash. That's the alarm that goes off to tell you to move forward. You move forward, you get into that wash, and five minutes later, you're in Janthony's backyard. Gary Janthony's backyard. You see his younger son, Chris, just sitting back there watching everyone from the sandbox, wondering when his house turned into a car wash place. That's Janthony's car wash. Hey, you got a second spot here, Gary. G gave it to you for free. Guess I didn't have much of a choice since there's a car wash across the street now with an alarm system that goes off. I, every time a car pulls in, that alarm has to go off. Yep, there it is. Anyway, so, of course, the main thing I wanted to talk about is the situation with Pete, our pool guy. Pete, our pool guy, who cleans our pool on Wednesdays and has been for many years, as far as we knew, was using our garbage can as a drug drop. He was taking the garbage out for us and dropping something in there and someone was picking it up. My wife told me to fire him or she wasn't going to come back to the house. And I told her that I would, and then I didn't. I mean, I tried to fire him, and I just couldn't do it. You know, I tried to tell him I couldn't afford it, and he was like, oh, I'll do it for free. Anyway... Her dad, who can't stand me, also wanted me to call the police and fire him. But anyway, it took me about two days to tell my wife I hadn't fired him. And I had to tell her at some point. We took our son, Phil, to get some shoes at the sporting goods store. And I told her on the way back. And I felt bad because it turned into a pretty bad argument. And our son was there for the whole thing. But that doesn't mean I didn't record it. I recorded it because I record everything in the field as far as this case is concerned. I mean, I'm an insurance adjuster, so I have a little bit of detective in my blood. So I'm used to collecting information for cases that I'm working on. Anyway, here's what happened. Check it out. How the, how the shoes feel? Got his headphones on. So, how'd it go with Pete? I wanted to talk to you about that. What? Well, I originally I'm called him because I was going to fire him. But I didn't want to really confront him about the issue, and so I told him I couldn't afford it, and then he said he'll clean the pool for free. You can listen to what I'm saying. The point was not how much we were paying him. The point was... Right, I understand that, but there's more information that I wanted you to know about. The other night, I followed somebody that was so cursing... You followed another person? It, the guy's a DEA agent. Okay. He says they've been watching Pete, they're just not sure that it is. I need to breathe, and I need to get out of the car. You, yeah. can't, you can't get out of the car. It's a freeway. We'll just pull over. 
to stop. I'm not gonna let you out of the car on the I'm, freeway. I'll pull a, over into the. I'll pull over into the. There's the, an I'll pull over in neighborhood. I'm not incline. gonna pull over. There's not even a place to pull over here. I will climb up that hedge. Where are you gonna go? I'm going to Taco Bell. And pull over. Fine. You're gonna climb a hedge? I gotta drive. I gotta drive. There's too many you cars. This is dangerous. No, you shouldn't be on the freeway. There's a fence there. She got out of the car. What? When did she get out of the car? When did she get out of the car? You didn't just see me pull over and have an argument with her? She insisted on getting out of the car? I had my headphones on. You had your headphones in? What, do you have them on over your eyes? Well, you just pulled over and had a whole I, argument. I, she got out of the car on the freeway. And that's not a safe place to leave someone. Well, she didn't give me much of a choice. She insisted on getting out of the car. Could you let me out of the car, too? You want to get out of the car, too? I, I, I don't want to be in here. Why would I let you out? You drop mom in the freeway. I didn't drop her in the freeway. She insisted on getting out. I can't believe you dropped her in the freeway. Honestly, I can't either. I, it all happened in the moment. It doesn't excuse too. anything. I didn't no, just I, I let her out of the up, car. What am I going to do? Physically restrain her? Car, I'm going to physically highway. restrain her? She place. wanted to get out of the... I know it's well, not a I safe place. She highway. wanted to get out of the car and I just... Let me out, please. Look, if you gotta get out of the car, I'll pull over. I'm gonna take this on ramp. I'll let you off in the neighborhood. Can you let me out right here? Let me get off the on ramp and just get into this na the neighborhood, and then you can walk from there. Okay. All right, here I'll let you out right here. All right, I'll see you at home. You can drive alongside me the whole time. Yeah. I can go home by myself. It's five blocks, okay? I'm just gonna let you walk I'm, alone. I'm perfectly safe. I'm much safer out here than in the car. Do you think this is bad? Mom, it's walking home from the freeway. All right. I'll take that remark. I'll see you at home. Love you. If you keep following me, I'm going to scream for help, okay? All right, fine. Please and thank you. Love you. Love you. Bye. So you heard what happened there, and obviously that wasn't the greatest situation. Obviously, it was probably just not a good time to tell her, but she asked me about it, and I told her. Honestly, it wasn't even the first time she's gotten out on the freeway. That's happened two other times. There's just not a lot you can do when someone wants to get out on the freeway and they're opening the door while you're driving. I had to pull over. You know, she jumps out, had to basically scale a hedge to get to a fence and climb over it. I mean, that is someone who really doesn't want to be in the car with you. And then I get home and the last person I want to see is standing in my driveway. It's Pete. He's standing there with a the power washer. I guess he had taken my power washer at some point. I didn't even know when. I tried to fire him last week and I end up finding out that he's borrowed my power washer without asking me. He's had this thing so long I didn't even remember I had a power washer. Anyway, I get home and he's standing there in the driveway. And I'll, anyway, I'll play that recording for you in a second right after this promo. This podcast is sponsored in part by used foosball tables. I don't know if you've ever wanted to buy a foosball table, but they're really expensive. You know, a decent foosball table starts at around $1,500. You go in to see this guy, Nick. He's going to get you a good foosball table for $250, $300 tops. And you step into this foosball place and, man, you're going to be hooked. I mean, get ready to dive into this stuff. Let me tell you something. You go into this place. they got a foosball club in here. These guys are so good. You wouldn't believe how fast these guys play foosball. You can't even follow the ball. We're talking about lightning fast wrists of steel. I didn't even know you could be this good at foosball. Some of these guys, you look at them, you wouldn't even think they were athletic. But man, you get them on a foosball table and that ball, that ball is zipping around. You wouldn't believe how that ball zips. It's a serious environment. You walk in there during a tournament, every head turns and looks at you like, you know what you're doing? You know why you're in here? You gotta watch your step in this place, man. It's like walking into a Michael Clayton style poker match in a dark basement somewhere. They take it seriously too, man. One guy got punched so hard last year after a tournament that he nearly died. They had to rush him to the hospital because uh, his left eye had been crushed. You don't want to get punched in the face by a foosball guy. These guys may look like marshmallows, but their fists are made of concrete. You talk about a sack of potatoes with cinder blocks for hands. These guys punch hard, fast, and without mercy. And they're foosball players. But you got to check out used foosball tables over by Tro Legend Trophy. Uh, they got some great deals in there. Used foosball tables. Go in there. You talk to Nick. Don't go on a Monday or any time after 3 o'clock on Wednesday. Nick also gives foosball lessons, so give him a call. Used foosball tables right next to Legend Trophy City on Alameda. Down are the days of expensive food. 
right. And again, that's used foosball tables next to Legend Trophy City. Just a reminder, don't go to used foosball tables on uh, Wednesday on Mondays or Wednesdays after three. That's reiterated here in print, and it's in all caps three times. Not to mention someone called me yesterday and told me, make sure you say it again after the ad. So check it out. Just don't go on those days. Anyway, like I was saying, after the fight, Faye and Phil and I had on the freeway, I got back here and Pete was waiting in the driveway for me with my power washer. So I was upset and still pretty stressed out about the fight on the freeway. And I finally just had to break down and ask him about the drugs. And anyway, here's what happened. Hey, man. Hey, Pete, how you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Uh, what's going on? What are you? I, was... I thought you were coming on Wednesdays. You. I was bringing your power washer back. Look, I got to ask you a question. It wasn't yeah. working when I took it. That's the question. I probably should have asked you this a long time ago. And what do you got? Are you putting drugs in my garbage can? What? I'm what sorry to ask you this me? question. You I'm not calling the cops or anything. I just need to oh, know: Are you on, putting on, drugs? And I got to be honest with you: the DEA is watching this place. You're telling me you have nothing to do with this? Nope. Nope. Nobody's watching me. I would know if somebody was following me. They've been following you. They have not. Uh, I'm, I mean, that's a lot of, first of all, it's offensive. But after all I've done for you, you're still like, how are you doing drugs in my garbage can? I'm cleaning your pool for free. I know. Look, I'm sorry. I'm it really is drug sorry. dealing is what you accuse. You can use other terms, but that's what you accuse me of is trash can drug dealing. It's, it's offensive and it hurts my feelings. It hurts in a way that, like, I feel like we're... I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry that I even asked. It's clear we're not friends. Look, no. In a way that well, I didn't understand. Look, no. I don't I want you to think that. I don't want you to think we're not I friends. No, it's clear. I don't want you I'm to think that. I'm a trash that. drug I, dealer. No, I just I wanted to ask you a trash. question. I That's needed to ask you. Asked the truth me. is, yeah. I needed to ask you. I you needed, needed to be... You needed to ask me if I was a trash drug dealer. I thought we were friends. That's what I was working on. I was like, hey, I wanted to be your friend. I wanted to be your friend. That's why I did all this stuff. That's why I wash your towels. I'm that I sorry, my girlfriend. I'm sorry. I just had an argument with Faye. You should, I'm on the go. I'm not going to clean your pool anymore. Pete, not what? Even for money. No. Look, you I didn't mean to offend you, you, man. Mean? I had to ask you because because that's who you thought I was. No, I had to ah, ask you if that's who you were. I've got a baby who needs to eat stuff, and I'm I have a wife, girlfriend. We've been together a while. I'm gonna go. Don't worry about. It. I wish you'd let me just I'll, explain I'll, I'll, I'll to you, you why I... Are you in the DEA? I bet you'll notice some drugs are still there even though I don't come by and clean your pool. I bet that's what they're doing. Which are you in the DEA? Hear this song? Good, loving, gone, bad. That's me and you. You're being cool friends. All right, well, you heard all that, and I feel terrible... You know, I maybe I should never have assumed it was Pete, but I don't know how I couldn't assume it was Pete. He was leaving here. I had checked that garbage can three times, and those drugs were in that garbage can right after he left. If you could have seen the look on his face when I asked him if it was him, I know that I believe him. I know he's telling the truth. Anyway, I, I, I might have thought that was the worst of it, but I came in here to do the podcast after Pete left, and Chuck called me about Faye and Phil getting out of the car. And uh, anyway, here's that phone call. Hey, Chuck. Chuck. Good to hear your voice. So glad you answered. I'm just curious, and I don't know if you know this, but I'm pretty sure you do. My grandson and my daughter are on the freeway right now. Well, that's uh, Faye's on the freeway, but Phil is not on the freeway. I didn't drop him on the freeway. Oh, what a gentleman. Well, he actually wanted you to get only on the freeway. You only drop my daughter off on the freeway. Well, you know, you're using the term dropped, and I didn't drop her on the freeway. I, she was definitely frustrated. But so I, what do you think this was about? She, she had asked me to fire the pool guy, and I had made an attempt to, and I, I hadn't done it yet, and she, she was upset about that. You didn't fire her. I had made an attempt to, in fairness to me, I had I had tried to give him an excuse. I don't know how many locks you got on your door, but it won't be enough for me not to Chuck. batter right through it. I don't know where you buy a battering ram, but I am starting to search right now. I, Maybe you should marry the pool guy. 
That sounds fun for you. All right. Meanwhile, my daughter is on the freeway, and my grandson... Uh, look, I, I tried to follow him. He made me, you know, drive away, but... Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a rom-com where the, where the girl gets out, and then the guy drives next to her, and uh, he begs her to get back in. It's kind of like that. No, it's more like a horror movie where a terrible husband drops his wife on the freeway. Serial killers do that. It's a monster movie. You're a monster. They should make a USA Network movie about you. I don't know if you've seen Dirty John. This would make a great season of that. Well, thanks for calling, Chuck. You're not going to come down here and kidnap my family. It's not kidnapping if you're worried about someone. All right. Let me know when they get home from the freeway. All right, I, I will let you. I will Jesus let you know, Chuck. I'm sorry. Christ, man. Goodbye. All right. Well, Chuck certainly got his two cents in once again, and we'll have more on that later. Uh, my wife should be home soon, and we'll talk about what happened on the freeway. This podcast is brought to you by. Gary Janthony's Car Wash, as well as TakeGaryDown.org. Go to TakeGaryDown.org to get all of your resources from the city on what you need to do to file charges against Gary, or just go to Janthony's Car Wash and check it out. Sounds like that car wash is getting pretty busy across the street right now, actually. Also brought to you by Jan Robinson Shirts and Pants. It's not just a shirt, it's a Jan Robinson shirt. You gotta check out her watermelon jacket. And don't forget Rick Merrill's Tall and Long Shop. Take your motorcycle in there, he'll make your handlebars long. And he can make your front wheel go way in front of the motorcycle. Also, use foosball tables. you got to check that place out. Just don't go in there anytime on Monday or after 3 on Wednesdays. All right, that's this episode of Valley Heat. Take it easy. These are the chronicles of the Rancho of the Western District of Disturbing, California. This is the stuff that is going on in the neighborhood. And I'm letting you know what's going on in the neighborhood on the podcast. Someone installed a stall size drive through car wash across the street. Yeah,